Good evening. Um, School World Forum 2015, believe, we have seen it, Jeff. And I'm incredibly happy that we have a, a moment together to unpack a little bit what you personally believe in, but I would also like to explore what you believe that you can do with your life to make a difference in the world. Let us start with your personal belief. Um, as was already said, for some, belief, personal belief relates to religion. For others, it relates to, to ethics, to a sense of right and wrong, to, to fairness, justice. And um, I would love to know, would you describe yourself as being religious? Thank you, Mabel. And uh, <laughs> the uh, first thing I'd like to say is uh, I believe in all of you. I'm, I'm so excited uh, to be here uh, at our 12th annual School World Forum. Um, you'll hear the recurring theme of social entrepreneurs as, as heroes. Um, I wanted to welcome three special guests uh, who are here for the first time at the School World Forum. Uh, two of them share my last name. I'd like to welcome my parents, Mort and Judy Skoll. <laughs> And the reality, the, the reality is they, they, they started the foundation, and I've just been the front person for it all these years. Uh, welcome, Mom and Dad. They'll be married 57 years uh, this year. So glad to have you here. Um, and, and speaking of uh, marriage, I'm happy to welcome my wife, uh, Stephanie Swedlove. And I, I can't stop there. Uh, Stephanie's mother, Wendy Sweatlove, my mother-in-law, is also here for the first time. So, Mabel, back, back to your question. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, think, um, I think belief is indeed, as Stefan said, it's a, it's a complicated uh, subject. And I, I truly believe that we're, we're all interconnected and that there is a, a, a greater force that's greater mm. than all of us. And e even in this room, uh, there's so much positive energy. There's so many wonderful people doing great things in the world. And I don't know about you, but uh, I feel that. I feel inspired. And connecting to that energy and knowing that there is this greater force that we can connect to through whatever religion it may be, uh, I think is incredibly powerful, and um, I, I think there are many ways to connect to that, uh, to that mm -hmm. belief. Um, uh, and I, I think the, the, you know, there, there are different philosophies, there are different belief systems, and I think the only belief system that is, 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 is wrong is the one that says that there's this, that, that's the only way to connect mm -hmm. to this greater being. Yeah. You mentioned that, that Judy and, and Mort, your parents, are here. I'm very curious to know, what do you think is one of the most valuable things that they told you? And we'll check it maybe <laughs> later with them. Huh? <laughs> uh, mom and dad. Well, um, I, uh, you know, I, I, I think we're the products of our, our families and mm -hmm. our environments. And, um, you know, if, if you've heard me tell uh, bad jokes, and I may pop a few in during the course of this, uh, this interview, uh, I get that from my dad. <laughs> and uh, the good sense to actually not tell those jokes, I get that from my mom. But, uh, you know, I, my parents are just the nicest people in the world, and great values. And uh, I, th I think growing up with that g gives a person a, a sense of self mm -hmm. and a sense of uh, their place in the world. Um, so. You know, I, I, I'd love to ask that, that question of you, but uh, you're... Another time. M M Mabel has... Uh, <laughs> M Mabel has, So ye yesterday we did a, a, a brief Q&A with the social entrepreneurs, and it was about an hour long, and Mabel said, we don't have an hour. You have to be crisper on your answers. 
or I'll cut you off. Or you'll cut me off. <laughs> exactly. Um, Jeff, it's a big year, important year. You turned 50, you got married. What is actually quite odd, I thought, is that there is a happy birthday song, there isn't a happy marriage song, happy marriage song. But so maybe we can invent something another time. <laughs> I remember when Sally Osberg told me for the first time about Stephanie. And she said, you will like her, Mabel. She shares the same values as Jeff. Mm. Now, I'm very curious how you would describe the values that Stephanie and you believe in. Hmm. Yeah, th these are very uh, <laughs> personal <laughs> questions. Well, you know, I, I, um, you know it's funny. I, 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 when, you, when you grow up, uh, mm -hmm. You are uh, accustomed to a certain way of of living and being and treating people, and uh, you know I grew up in a middle class background in Canada, and uh, life has changed over the last 15 years. Um, uh, you know, uh, after after eBay and starting the foundation and going to Hollywood and all, all of that stuff, but at the end of the day, you're still that same person that you grew up being, and. Um, Stephanie uh, grew up in a very similar environment, uh, Canadian and um, middle class, and our and, and we're both uh, we're both Jewish, um, and uh, you know our, our our ancestors came over on the same boats pretty much from uh, from Europe, uh, sort of be, you know, between the wars, and so you know there, there's something when you when you find somebody that uh, you you connect with and your value systems are are aligned. Uh, that, that you find really wonderful. And then the love helps, of course. The love, the love, the love helps, <laughs> yes. Um, right, honey? <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, um, belief also relates to what, what we think we can do with our lives. Mm. And as a philanthropist, you obviously believe in, in the concept of human progress. Now, many of us know and have you heard you talk about uh, that as a kid you wanted to, to be a storyteller, mm. uh, hoping that your stories would have a positive impact on the world. This suggests that already at a fairly young age, you, you had a sense of that the world wasn't necessarily perfect and could be improved. And, and I quite vividly remember for myself growing up in a middle class family in the Netherlands, mm. when I was quite young, the moment I realized that actually all these things I took for granted, education, schooling, uh, uh, food, that that was actually quite unique and that there were a lot of people who didn't have the same privileges. And so I'm wondering, did you in your youth, or, or maybe later, have that moment where you really realized, do you remember that moment for like, the world isn't perfect, and, and mm. that you thought, okay, and this is what I'm going to do about it to make it a better mm. place. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I mean, for me as a, as, as a kid, uh, growing up, uh, I, I read a lot of books, and a lot, a lot of books, you know, it's either historical fiction or mm. books about the future or the potential future. Um, 1984, um, Brave New World, uh, Animal Farm, th th things like that. And, and I remember thinking that by the time I was older, by the time I had kids, the world might not be as pleasant a place. Mm -hmm. And I, I, just, I thought I, I would be a storyteller and try to tell stories about the big issues that affect us all and uh, would, would try to get people involved through the, through the power of storytelling. <laughs> now that said, it was all, it was all very academic. Um, my family never really traveled much when I was younger, and when I graduated college, I, I was 20 years old, uh, had never been on a plane, mm -hmm. and decided to backpack around the world. And for, for a kid that hadn't seen much of the world, uh, that was very eye-opening. I mean, you know, Canada's a prosperous place, and it's very egalitarian, and you don't, you don't see as much hardship and poverty and so on. And I remember kind of making my way, and. Uh, I, I, I think, I think you know, of all places, um, you know, there are probably two that stand out, uh, Sudan and Pakistan, as places where uh, I saw people living in the most desperate circumstances, and, and particularly uh, Pakistan uh, just, just affected me. It was, I mean, this is going back 20 plus years, but uh, the, there were folks living in the most desperate conditions without Healthcare and air so thick you couldn't breathe, and 
you know, fundamentalist religion and not a lot of hope and uh, nuclear weapons. And I remember thinking, um, the world can't, can't have something like this exist. Um, and from that moment on, I, I was compelled uh, to want to make the world a better place so that everybody could live in a sustainable world of peace and prosperity. Everybody should have access to education. Everybody should have health care and live in peace. And, um, you know, so I'd gone from the, the books, uh, reading as a kid, to actually seeing it in real life, and that, that really set me on a mission. Okay. And once you got off on that mission, um, at some point I got to know you, and, and I think um, I know you as someone who really likes to take the plunge. <laughs> and um, you're not afraid to tackle major problems and, and, you know, basically take enormous risks. Um, we also know that with success, there's always failure. That's part of it. Progress requires learning. Could you share with us when in your life you've been proven wrong? Well, it, you know, I, I laughed when Mabel said, uh, take the plunge. Uh, you know, uh, Mabel was uh, CEO of the Elders uh, for many years, and uh, the Elders is a wonderful organization. We'll talk a bit about that, I hope, in, in a moment. Uh, we were in Morocco at an Elders meeting, and Mabel uh, challenged me to uh, jump in the, uh, the pool with her. Uh, so we, we took the plunge together, and uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, I remember uh, President Carter sort of just shaking his head and walking away. And, uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, back to back to the question, uh, proven wrong. Um, <laughs> um, you know, they, they, they say no matter what the question, you should always know what you're going to say and <laughs> say it anyway. Um, uh, well, I, I, I think um, I think there, there, there's, there's something that uh, we grow up with or we are accustomed to in mm -hmm. society where we're told uh, you can't trust people, you can't trust your neighbor. Uh, you read the newspapers and there are headlines that things are bad and things are getting worse. Um, but the reality is um, people are basically good. And if you give good people the opportunity, they'll do good things. Uh, I remember when Pierre and I uh, first got together and uh, Pierre had this idea for eBay and you know, in the early days uh, there was a moment where somebody had to trust that some stranger uh, would have an item that they described online and that they would send this person some money and that this person was going to send this item and that it would be as described. And uh, folks said, uh, no, you can't, you can't trust people. And we were like, no, no, actually, you, you can. People are, are, are trustworthy. Um, and, uh, you know, here it is many years later, and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. e eBay's still around, so I guess Pierre, Pierre was right. Um, but, you know, that, that philosophy that people, is ba people are basically good is, is something that all, all, all of you in this room share, uh, or, or you wouldn't be here. Uh, I, I remember, and cut me off if you want to, Mabel. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm going to say that. No, when, look, everybody wants to hear how you're going to admire them, so go on, go on a little <laughs> bit. I mean, otherwise. Um, in, in the very early days, so uh, eBay had gone public and uh, we had started the eBay Foundation, which I ran, and very soon after started um, what was then called the School Community Fund, mm -hmm. which I ran part time. Uh, while still at eBay, and uh, a few years later, um, started uh, you know decided that now's the time to really focus on a foundation and build it, and brought in the incredible Sally Osberg as CEO and employee number one. <laughs> and Sally took me to meet her mentor, uh, John Gardner. Mm -hmm. who uh, was the Minister for Health, Education, and Welfare under Lyndon Johnson and the architect of the Great Society programs in the United States in the 1960s. And we asked John, what could we do uh, to best ensure the survival of humanity into the future? And John said, bet on good people doing good things. Um, 
and when we talked about that more, he, he felt that there were al always going to be problems in society, but there would be people who would stop at nothing mm -hmm. to solve these problems and would dedicate their lives to, to, to uh, making a difference. And uh, just around that time, uh, the term social entrepreneurship began to be known. Mm -hmm. And we felt that there was a, an incredible opportunity to help this field of entrepreneurs in the nonprofit sector uh, get going. Um, Bill Drayton, who I, I, I believe is here, um, you know, sort of coined the term social entrepreneurship. But here we are, all these years later, betting on good people doing good things. And I never answered your question about how I've been proven wrong. Exactly, Isn't that you great? did very well, very well. <laughs> But I do want you to, to respond to the next one, which is, so we have a room <laughs> full of social entrepreneurs and leaders. What are the qualities for good leadership? And can you actually learn it? Can they actually teach it? I mean, I guess you think so, because otherwise you wouldn't have built that enormous school there. Or is it something more that comes with experience? Mm. Um, I, le le leadership is an interesting thing, and mm. I've, I've learned more and more over time uh, about what makes a great leader. And I, I think the first thing is a, a, a moral compass, mm -hmm. um, an ethical direction of knowing right from wrong. Uh, second is a belief that you can accomplish something and rally people earnestly around whatever it is you're trying to accomplish um, so you're not putting on an, on an act, uh, you're, you're, you're actually, um, you, you believe in something and uh, it's profoundly impactful on you and you can naturally uh, discuss this and, and get other people uh, involved. Um, Noah Manduk is here and he's a, you know, a branding expert and he says, you know, brand is about being yourself on purpose. I think great mm -hmm. leaders um, are great leaders because they are themselves, they know what their purpose is, and they're, they're dedicated to it. Um, stamina. Uh, mm -hmm. We mentioned the elders, and uh, we've been so lucky to work with incredible mm -hmm. elders, uh, such as uh, um, Kofi Annan, and President Carter, and Archbishop Tutu, and uh, Grasa Michelle, um, many of whom have, have graced the forum over the years, and we've traveled the world with, with the, these folks. And President Carter uh, turned uh, 90 uh, mm. last year, and he runs rings around all of us. Uh, and and that, that made me wonder, well, first, you know, how, what was he like when he was uh, a younger uh, man? <laughs> um, but stamina, just stamina, hard work, Good values, purpose, knowing what you're doing, all those qualities are, are the hallmarks of, of, of great leaders. And I'm sure I'm forgetting um, a whole bunch, but uh, you're a great leader, Mabel. What do you have to say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, today I don't talk, oh, I only dear. ask questions. Um, but no, you're referring to the elders, and I'm actually curious. So, that's where, where we met each other seven years ago, and, and we've seen them doing amazing work, and we've also been privy to, to their conversations about how they look at the world and, and what they think they can change. And if you look back at, at you know, basically spending time and being educated by the elders, what, what are the things that, that you feel you have learned from them, either collectively or, or maybe from some of them individually? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll start by going back and, and, mm -hmm. and just saying that over uh, the course of my lifetime, I've been privileged to come across incredible leaders in, in all fields, uh, in, my, you know, teachers, uh, in, 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 in schools, um, uh, my, 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 my family, um, uh, business leaders, mm -hmm. uh, you know, start, starting eBay was an incredible opportunity to be around incredible, incredibly wise people. Piero Pier Midiar, for those that don't know him, is, is one of the wisest people I've ever met. And I think when we first started uh, eBay, Pierre was you know, in his late 20s. So I, I, don't, I don't think wisdom is a function of age. It's a function mm -hmm. of some uh, a, a other quality. Um, and then, and then again, you know, over time, have have met incredible, uh, dynamic, impressive leaders. 
and, and especially in, in this world, uh, people that are dedicated to a cause, to um, making, you know, make, making sure that the planet is, is livable for our future generations, uh, protecting the forests, um, being on the front lines. Uh, you know, every year I see um, Karachlane Bakhtiri of Pakistan and Sakina Yakubi of Afghanistan. These are not elders. I asked you about the elders. No, I'm coming back to that. Don't, oh, don't, don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, uh, the, these are you know leaders mm -hmm. who uh, every year um, are so impressive by their experiences, what they've learned, and um, ha you know the, the challenges that they have of leading their organizations mm -hmm. and educating millions of girls and you know uh, et cetera. The elders collectively as a group uh, has been an incredible experience. Uh, I, I, I was lucky enough to come along early, early on when the group was just being formed. And uh, individually, each of the elders um, are incredible uh, people in, in their own right. Um, together, uh, it, it's, it's like an exponential uh, value. Uh, and and you, you, you know, some of the elders are from Africa, some are from South America, some are from the, uh, Europe, uh, some are from America. And uh, you know, all of them are global citizens. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it, it's, it's so impressive to have a conversation about UN reform with mm -hmm. uh, Kofi Annan in the room, or about faith and belief with uh, Archbishop Tutu in the room, um, or, or, or about um, the Middle East with, uh, with, with President Carter and Lakhdar Brahimi, um, uh, Africa and the rise of, of Africa and making a difference with uh, uh, Miss Michelle and uh, Arch and, and, and others, um, and and it's sort of uh, you know I, I wish we could clone uh, the elders and um, transfer those lessons so that everybody in the world can can see what we've been so privileged mm -hmm. to see, how the leading moral icons of of our time uh, are human beings mm -hmm. and have um, you know, just these, these lessons for, for us all. If, if, if the world was composed uh, entirely of, of elders as, as we know them, uh, the world would be a much better place. I agree. And I think one of the things that's, that really is special about them is that they all are, despite all their amazing achievements, they have remained humble and, and human. Um, I'm really curious. and. <laughs> I mean, I've been dying in a way to ask you this question for seven years. Who's your favorite elder? <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, Arch and Grasso Michelle and Mary Robinson are in the room, so. Oh, Mary is here. Hello, Mary. Um, I think she is here. Is she, anyway. Well, um, honestly, uh, I mean, all of the elders are absolutely <laughs> incredible. And, uh, you so know, I, 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 I. So I, I do I, a follow-up question? I, I mean that, um, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, t together, uh, you know, some of us have been to the Middle East, and uh, participant had a project on nuclear weapons at one point, and um, Gru Brundtland uh, was a big part of helping mm. us with with that, and um, um, uh, just uh, you know, a, 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 a long long story short, all of the elders are involved in so many of the world's biggest issues. Uh, Mary, obviously, now on climate change and also on uh, girls' rights and women's rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, collectively, um, th no. they're all my favorites. How about you? <laughs> I, I must say I was always uh, impressed how Archbishop Tutu could, as the chair, could manage that, that group of people who are hard to manage. But obviously, he could threaten with the fact that if they didn't behave, they would go to the hotter place <laughs> later on. So. <laughs> Um, let's talk a tiny bit about, about girls and women, because um, I, I know that's an issue you, you are, are very passionate about. Um, it's obviously not something that fits in the global threats category of your work. It's more a, you know, a global opportunity. Um, I mean, you've been supporting films in this field. You, you have, there are tonnes of, of female social entrepreneurs here. I know you're working now on, on a project that is really close to your heart, which is um, 
It's, you know, Malala was here last year. Since mm. then, she got uh, the Nobel Prize. And now you are producing uh, a film about Malala's life. What are you expecting from that film? Mm. Yeah, uh, many, uh, many, many dimensions to, to that question. I mean, for, first off, um, w w w women's rights in, in, in general uh, are, to, to, to my mind, countries that have uh, gender equality uh, are, are, are the best off countries in the world. Um, you know, and Sa Sally ha has been leading uh, uh, something called the Social Progress Indicator and the Social Progress Index uh, for many years with um, Michael Porter and, and others. And uh, the, the SPI has come out with its rankings for the last uh, couple of years. And the countries that, and by the way, the, the Social Progress Indicator is sort of everything other than GDP. So it sort of takes that out of the, the equation. It's how many doctors are there in the population and how uh, well off are people, longevity, women's uh, more, uh, 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 childbirth uh, uh, statistics, things like that. And generally, uh, countries that are, are gender balanced are, are much better off than anywhere else. Um, Many of the uh, social entrepreneurs in, in this room uh, deal, deal with human rights and many with education. And to, uh, in, in, including, including your, yourself, uh, Mabel, um, with Girls Not Brides. And I think if there is a silver bullet in the developing world, uh, it's girls' education. Um, when girls are educated, uh, they, they get married later. Uh, they educate their children, they can provide for their family, uh, they, they have fewer children and they're healthier families, their societies are better off, and it, it, you know, it's an incredible thing. And you mentioned uh, urgent threats, well, yeah, we, you know, we are working on these you know, giant global threats like climate change and nuclear weapons and pandemics and so on, but we're gonna get through those, but when we do, in the long term, we want to have a world that's fair and sustainable and equitable and great and a pleasure for everyone to live in. Mm -hmm. And uh, girls' education, I think, is one of those incredible opportunities that is right in, in, our, in our laps. And last year, Malala uh, uh, gave a, an incredible uh, keynote presentation. Um, for those of you who were here, it, w it was... It's kind of uh, interesting. I think Malala was 16 at the time, and uh, she had uh, she had her her notes uh, written in crayon, and <laughs> and uh, she delivered just one of the most incredible, uh, wise, uh, engaging talks that we've ever had here at the forum. And Malala is the face of this movement mm -hmm. of girls' education. And you know, when I look around the room. Um, uh, and I see people like Ann Cotton and Campfed who educate uh, two million girls, and one of our new awardees, Educate Girls in India, and uh, Citizens Foundation in Pakistan, and IDSP in Pakistan, and the Afghan Institute of Learning in Afghanistan, and I, I can go on and on, Free the Children, sort of uh, Africa, Latin America, uh, India, and so on. Um, this, the social entrepreneurs in this room touch hundreds of millions of kids in the developing world. And I think collectively, we have an opportunity uh, with Malala as the face of this movement uh, to make a difference. So, um, Davis Guggenheim, uh, who directed An Inconvenient Truth, and uh, uh, Waiting for Superman, which was a documentary about the American education system, um, has directed a film on Malala, mm -hmm. um, which we are, we participant are, are producing, and we're trying to create the world's greatest campaign around girls' education that uh, the world has ever seen, and, and the moment is now, and we're, we're very excited about it. I think time has come. <laughs> <It's> great. <laughs> and like you say, you have a. You have a room full of people who can help create that movement. Mm. And this is the time, so let's, let's do it. I have a final question. And um, I mean, I have a million other questions, but we'll do that maybe the next time. But 
The one I would like to know now is, if you were to have a daughter, what would you want for her? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> Well, yes, first I would uh, consult with my wife <laughs> and ask, uh, well, uh, no, I, I mean, I, I, I think a, a universal human uh, value is uh, parents want their children to grow up in a better world than they experienced. And I, uh, Stephanie and I have been privileged to grow up in a pretty good world. Um, we, would, we would love our, our, our daughter uh, to grow up in a uh, better world than, than we've seen. Um, fairer, equitable, more peaceful, more sustainable, um, more, um, uh, more, more, more balanced. Um, and uh, just, uh, you know, the, we're, we're, at, we're at the turning point in the world. You know, it's sort of, there's been a, a race between these critical problems and these good people doing good things. And we're finally at that nexus where I, I think we're going to change the trajectory. Um, we're going to have a, a clean energy global in infrastructure within 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that's going to solve water problems and uh, help alleviate extreme poverty and uh, solve food dilemmas and uh, solve a lot of the health problems that we're going to have, the breakthroughs in health. I, I mean, 15 years from now, I think we're going to be able to reverse aging. Um, the world is going to be an incredibly wonderful place. And for our daughter, uh, Stephanie and I would love our daughter to have uh, a wonderful, long, long life uh, with every opportunity in the world. And we would wish the same for every other parents, daughters uh, worldwide. You know, Jeff, you unite us all. You inspire us all. And please, Stephanie and Jeff, know that we will do everything, all of us here together, to make sure that your daughter will grow up in that world that you would like her to live in. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you Mabel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>